Welcome to the CESS meeting. It is June 21st. We have one a topic on the agenda today. That is a conversation with Nicolo, uh, who has requested Mark's presence to talk about re-entrance in uh, the context of the proposal to add deferred module exports. Nicolo, would you like to provide some more background? Uh, yes. I cannot screen share the, the screen share, but if you could screen share the proposal with me, that would be uh helpful. Do you have um the link? Yes. Yes. I'll send it here and coming out coming right up. And Okay, well, no, actually the readme is very out of date. So just a recap of the proposal is, uh, we are trying to introduce a way to load, to import modules while deferring their actual evolution until when it's actually needed. Uh, and yeah, that syntax there in readme is not the current syntax, it's update. We align with that proposal and having like an import followed by keyword that will be the fair and then the, the rest of the import statement. And we're introducing a syntactic restriction that you can only use the third imports uh, with uh, namespace imports. So you would have to do the fair import the fair star as namespace name and then from your module. Uh, and the module doesn't get evaluated until when you access one of the exports from the from the namespace, ob namespace object. Uh, so like in this example, during like lazy model space dot some dot name would trigger the evaluation of the module. Uh, there are some, there is a problem, uh, which is how we uh, like property access is synchronous. So we can only synchronously evaluate models and some models might have top level weight. And the two different uh, ways to solve this problem was, well, one was to just disallow the third imports if there is uh, an asynchronous module somewhere. And the other one is to eagerly evaluate the asynchronous parts of a module. And that's the option we picked so that Introducing top level weight into an existing module is less breaking. So, uh, Nico, uh, your audio seems a little bit muddy to me, so it's hard for me to make out all of your words. Is, does, that, does everybody else hear, hear Nicolo clearly, or is it just me? Well, I can try to turn my mic volume up. Uh, just have. I am processing a little too much of whether I could possibly identify where, where Nicolo is based off of bird song. Yeah, I'm outside because I'm not at home now. <laughs> um, okay, I so, tried increasing the volume a little bit. I don't know if it's actually better or not. Okay, well, um, it might be. Uh, let, we'll see. Let me let me to, to make up for my not having gotten all the words. Let me ask ask questions as we go. Um, so, um, uh, I thought I heard you say that you can only use it with namespace imports, which would be on the for what for, for the text on the screen. Nicole, I don't know. If, I know you can't screen share. I don't know if you can see what is being screen shared. Yes. Yes, I can see. Okay. So uh, on the three lines of code that's on the screen right now, um, the the this the uh, number two and three I would think are the ones that are called namespace imports, and number yes. one okay. So yes, so like the the proposal is actually like more similar to the third one, except that the keyword is after import and not before. Okay. Um, What's the difference between the third one and the second one? Uh, just the syntax. We, we ended up not reusing import attributes, but like we see uh, the fair as one of the various phases. Got it. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so the uh, so then the deferred execution would be triggered by okay let's 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 um, let's take the the third example um, if le a later if there's a later use of the variable y n s that would not force execution but a later use of the very of the a later expression like yns dot foo would trigger evaluation is that correct yes exactly okay okay um wow okay that directly addresses the thing i was most worried about um so let me make sure i'm understanding the implication of that which is uh, it would still never be the case that this proposal introducing introduces interleaving uh, an interleaving point at the point of reading a variable. Uh, a variable read uh, in the abs you know if it's not going to the global object and it's not going to to a with scope object that a variable read would remain in the language something that can never cause an interleaving during the read. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And like not everyone's happy with this restriction, but like it was the like the best way to satisfy all the different concerns that we've heard, both from a like code static analysis point of view and to like to the low existing engine optimizations to still be valid. And I'm happy okay. this also solves some security aspects. Yeah, this solves a big security aspect. This means that uh, we we're not introducing a new surprise, uh, you know, surprising interleaving point for reentrancy attacks that would really be very much outside the model of of what programmers assume can be can execute a straight line code. And then the thing that does interleave introduce the interleaving point is um, something that looks like a property access. In fact, it actually is a property access. And um, you can, uh, and it, we already described the namespace module as an exotic object. And exotic objects already can um, have getter behavior. Well, exotic objects and proxies. Uh, so proxies are actually the more important precedent. Proxies already can do interleaving on property read, even if they describe the property as a frozen data property. So, I th so, so this is great. I think you've addressed my major concern. And, and, okay. and no matter what. Um... As far as I remember, module namespace objects uh, can never be frozen. They are already pro. Oh. No, they're not because their uh, properties are uh, are not set as uh, writable. Yeah, the, um, and the, there's no way to change that. The um, yeah, I would I would like to see that changed. Um, but uh, it is it is the and I think XS already behaves the way I would like to propose that the standard be changed. Yeah, and yeah. The yes, I, XS actually deviates from the standard there. Yeah, um, uh, in in a way that 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 I think is attractive. I th um, the um, I think that you know if the if the export if the exported variable is not a live binding, then uh, having the property be described as non-writable, non-configurable, um, I think makes more sense. Uh, but but yes, the spec says that the properties of a module namespace object are all writable whether the exported variable is an exported const variable or not. Okay. However, is frozen returns true, right? On the next piece object? No, no, if the if it can't. Uh, is frozen is um, 
is frozen should be true only if the object is non-extensible and all of, it, all of its properties are non-writable, non-configurable. Okay, thank you. I was confused because I was testing this with dynamic import, assuming it was the same, because dynamic import returns a frozen object. Ah. I, I didn't that I know. Uh, I, uh, return the, uh, the namespace object. It should. That's what I would expect. Yeah. Let's, um, let's investigate this. Uh, yeah. Come back. If it's the I'm case also... that, 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 were you, which engine were you testing? So I'm testing this in Firefox, and I just noticed that also normal namespace objects are reported as frozen. I can paste the code I'm using here in the okay. chat. So what? Well, if, if Firefox and XS both deviate from the standard in the way that we like, that would be a uh, very, very No, good... no. The, the reason uh, it's reporting as a frozen namespace subject is that, that uh, your namespace subject is, is empty uh, and doesn't have ah. any properties. Ah, right. Oh, OK. Yeah, thank you. That's an That's interesting true. niggle. Uh, we'll have to look yeah. into that. <laughs> right, because the namespace object is non-extensible. So if it has no properties, then it is frozen. Yes. That's interesting. Um, in any case, uh, I think that we can say that Nicolo has addressed Mark's concern. I'm, uh, and I believe we uh, treaded this ground and arrived at this happy conclusion once before. I'm wondering if there's a deeper issue, Nicolo, you would like to ask. Uh, there was this, and then uh, like there is a new thing that can happen now that is the evaluation of a module might now be not at the top level of a call stack. So yeah. ah. you could trigger the evaluation from inside a function. Yeah, that was the biggest thing for me uh, when we last discussed this, uh, the fact that the module being evaluated can uh, figure out that is, it is being lazily evaluated. <sighs> Well, that's interesting. Uh, there was a great deal of conversation about what to do about that. Um, I believe that my concern that uh, this creates an inconsistency in what, uh, if, if module in initialization creates a deep stack, like one, just one shy of too many, then lazy evaluation would fail with a range error. I think that nobody's actually concerned with that particular case. Um, but, uh, and I believe Daniel Ehrenberg suggests- hold, 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 hold on. The spec does not, st does not state that out of stack results in a range error. The spec does not address out of stack. It, it's, it, the spec is in this hypothetical world of infinite memory. Right, but in the practical world, it would change. There is a possibility of a difference in behavior. <laughs> um, the reason the reason I'm raising this is because you know I've got this stage one proposal that um, there at least be a mode um, that um, you know then harden JavaScript and turn on this mode where any out of memory condition, including out of stack, uh, would result in immediate termination with no further execution of user code. That's very spiritually similar to a thing that I would like to propose that we do the same, except for reference error for completely different reasons. <laughs> um, reference error is the kind of thing where if you handle that error, it is not possible to investigate the point at which the failure occurred in a production system. Um, I, I think the... Uh... Stack overflow error is only one one case of behavioral difference that the evaluated module can have uh, if it can sense the uh, depth of the stack difference. And I mean, there is the implicit one like that is stack overflow. There is the explicit one as constructing an error and looking at the stack uh, trace. 
Um, the question is whether we want to allow difference in behavior for module evaluation uh, on whether it is lazily uh, evaluated or not. I think yeah, there's, so. a, there's actually, I'm, I'm going to say there's actually is a, uh, this kind of establishes that the term I use in my thesis, which is plan interference uh, hazard, is actually a, a, a more general category than reentrancy hazard, because there's a reentrancy hazard like problem um, in starting a mo starting module evaluation with a st with a non empty stack, which is uh, in part of the reason communicating event loops work so well is that um, uh, ab all abstractions are supposed to restore their invariance by the time the stack goes empty, all suspended invariance. Um, like if you're splicing a doubly linked list, you can't maintain all of your invariance step by step. You have to suspend your invariance, but you restore them before the stack goes empty so that um, uh, at the beginning of a turn, uh, anything that knows it's executing at the beginning of a term knows that everything else was supposed to have restored all of its suspended invariance. Um, if code that thinks it's executing at the beginning of a turn is actually executing with a non-empty stack, um, it might be the case that it calls into things that um, that uh, were not prepared to be called into. So this is it's kind of the 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 dual of the um, the previous problem. It's not the previous problem was surprising the caller. Uh, and that was solved with the property access because the caller ne needs to know that interleaving can happen on a property access. This one is surprising the callee, which is uh, right now modules know that they're executing with an empty stack. Uh, and that gives them all, all sorts of, of invariant assurance that they don't have um, uh, if the stack is not empty. Um, I'm remembering some of those discussions now, and I think last time we realized that um, it was already possible for this case to happen with dynamic imports, where in some engines, the asynchronous stack is available to, uh, is available through stack introspection by code. And if you are dynamically imported, uh, importing a, a module, uh, you will be able to realize whether you're dynamically imported or not, with, uh, based on if there is an asynchronous stack or not. Okay, I think I think you and I are raising two very different issues. Um, I I'm not sure. I'm just, I, I, will, I want to point out that I'm not talking about um, being able to to detect whether. Um, uh, I'm talking about the fact that that uh, that there's other actual stack frames that have not completed, and therefore there's there's caller caller state that has not yet been um, whose invariants have not yet been restored. There's there's potential caller objects that are not prepared to be uh, re-entered. Um, yeah, I don't understand how that entirely matters and the reason i don't understand how it matters is like i think it only matters if one of those stack frames that I, have not been unwound is one of your own stack frame that you assume wouldn't be there however in this case it is impossible for one of your own stack frames to be there because you are being evaluated the first time i'm sorry what what's the by one of your own you mean of the of the module if if a colleague oh. assumes it is called on an empty stack frame, uh, I assume, if I understand the problem correctly, is that by colleague here, I, do, I mean the top level like evaluation of the module. Yes, if whatever is I being, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't mean a function in the module being called. I mean, I just mean the top level code of the module itself. I, I am just trying to understand the 
what is the attack concern? What is the 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 what is the pro potential problem if code that expects to be executed on an empty stack actually isn't? Is it oh. right? Is it right to say that this problem is really only a problem if the code assumes it doesn't have one of its own stack frames above itself? No, 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 no. It's anything it uses. During the execution, it might call into something, assuming that the, it, you know, during the, during the execution of, of Alice, Alice might call into Bob, um, which is um, a pre-existing thing that, um, uh, that, and assuming that all of Bob's invariants have been restored because the stack was empty by the time Alice started executing. And in fact, um, uh, there is a Bob stack frame deeper on the stack uh, and Bob is in the midst of, um, you know, ha had been making a call afterward, Bob was going to be restoring some invariance. Um, uh, and I think, I think this, is, this is one of those cases where um, an accident scenario is actually more plausible than an attack scenario, although so it can certainly paint an attack scenario. But this is this one's mo mostly just a miscoordination, where um, uh, Alice's code assumes that Bob was in a pristine state when Alice calls into Bob, um, when you know Alice's top-level module code calls into Bob, which is let's say an imported object. Um, uh, but Bob, who's uh, you know is both an imported object but also in the midst of a call farther up the stack. Um, yeah, he but that, that's that's what I don't quite understand. If Bob is further up the stack, isn't he? Isn't Bob already prepared to have uh, and and it makes a call without assuming? Like I, I don't I don't think at that point Bob is assuming it's making a call in a new uh, empty, like that call will be executed in an empty stack. No, I, Bob, Bob, Bob is Bob is not assuming an empty stack. Oh, right. Um, so, so the kind of it, state, Bob so, getting executed. Uh, right. The, 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 the thing is, the 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 interleaving rule that Niccolo is proposing with the property access already protects Bob's expectations. Um, so it's 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 correctly protecting the caller um, from attack, um, uh, but. It's what do you mean? Viola violating the expectations of the callee. Um, which is violating I, Alice's expectations. I, I don't understand how it matters that Alice expecting to be called on uh, on an empty stack. How, how it? Wh why is Alice concerned about uh, about Bob's? Uh, about Bob's potential reentrancy. Um, Mark, may I propose that the only way we're going to make progress in the conversation is in the context of a concrete, um, a concrete scenario yeah. where an uh, is defeated. I, I agree. I, I agree. I will. I'm not going to try to construct one in real time, but I will. I will construct one. Okay. Um, I'm going to create a secret just and share it with you and fork it. Place to start. I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. You, some of your I didn't get all the words there. Yeah, I, I have created a secret just I'll share with you as a basis of uh, of uh, a copy. I'm sorry. The, the last part of your audio got garbled again. I will send you a gist. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I think that's as much as we can say today, Nicola. Would you like to? Yeah, thank you. Uh, if we'll have Mark's example by next week, I would be happy to join the call again. Okay, that sounds good. I will, I will commit to having an example by next week. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, no, and wait, wait uh, we are planning to, like, I still need to rewrite the readme to match the current proposal, but we plan to ask for stage two at the July meeting because most of the major details have been figured out. And this is why I'm bringing it up at the like at these meetings now. 
Okay. All right. Uh, so we know what's coming and we know how to prepare for it. Um, is there anything we wish to discuss further today? We have a half an hour. Well, we have 20 minutes. I see that Dan Minor is here. So maybe what? if we didn't finish discussion last time, I could try pinging the other Dan. Or so we finish the shadow. I did not understand um, another thing about Nicolo's presentation. Um, the um, uh, there were some options main. So, so with if the module that's deferred is uh, a has top level await. Um, uh, I did understand that one option is to just say you can't do deferred execution in that case, just prohibit it. Uh, that one I understand, uh, but there were some other options mentioned that I did not understand. Yeah, so all the models are still eagerly parsed because we had a requirement of not delaying early errors. So we have knowledge about all the modules and we okay. know about which modules use top level weight. So okay. what the proposal is doing right now is to eagerly evaluate the asynchronous modules together with its dependencies in the modules graph. So, and this is, uh, maybe Chris, if you could do the screen share again, uh, the repository and go in the closed request. There is an example of what is happening. So does that mean really that defer would be a best effort uh deferral but it may be still eagerly evaluated if it encounters a top level weight yes can you go Chris, oh, to the oh. pre pre request okay by eagerly you mean uh yes. as as if there was no defer uh for the asynchronous subgraphs. Oh, it's the first request. Right. This this and poor request? Yes, it has a code example. Right. The leaves that are not that don't have a top level weight would still be deferred. Yes. So in this example, A is the entry point. It's importing C with the defer import. And C imports uh like F, for example, and F has to level a weight. So F together with its dependencies is still eagerly evaluated as if so, A was directly importing F. So when you say eagerly evaluated, when is it, when is F yeah, evaluated? I, I mean, at the like initial evolution time and not later when accessing a property on the NS space. Okay, okay. So, so it, would, it would still execute all of F uh, both before and after the await, uh, uh, yes, all, yes. would execute with an empty stack, and yes, okay, okay, okay. That's interesting. Okay, that's that. There's there's no safety problem with that. Okay, uh, great. All right. I'm going to conclude the recording. Thank you very much for coming today.